let us uh, get into the message. We were looking into excellence. We did look into excellence part one, excellence part two, and excellence part three. Now, in excellence part one, we saw the life of Joseph. In the excellence part two, we saw the life of Moses. Now, today, in the excellence part three, we are going to look into our personal life, how we should do excellence. Now, when we read the dictionary, I was looking into the dictionary last night, and I found that excellence have different meanings. Now, when we look in the dictionary, excellence is a noun. It's the quality of being excellent. State of possession of good qualities in an eminent degree, exalted merit, or superiority in virtue. Excellence, excellence. A proper noun is a little honor or respect. More common in the form of excellency, your excellency. When, the, when we talk about the king in UK, in our, our king of United Kingdom, we talk about his excellency. If that we are saying, then how much more we should tell the king of kings and the lord of lords to his excellency. Now, see the British, the kingdom of Great Britain and the I I Ireland, we are, the, the, this kingdom have a, an expectation from us that we should be doing excellent everywhere in our character, in our attitude, in our lifestyle. So the kingdom support and provide for a lot for the citizens. Why? Because the kingdom want the citizens to live an excellent life. This is the same thing principle we need to understand. Our heavenly father gives us the best so that we will live an excellent life. As I said before also, do not call yourself an idiot when God called you excellent. When God, call it, God is calling you smart, don't call yourself an idiot. Why? God will not be happy about it. That's the reason don't call your wife an idiot. Don't call your husband an idiot. Don't call your children an idiot. Don't call your pastor an idiot. Don't call your members an idiot. No, we are not idiots, but we are called by God for greater purposes, and we have to live an excellent life, and that's what God is expecting from us. Amen. Now, see, in our life, what is excellence? Excellence in our, in our um, viewpoint, and many times excellence is all about being first, isn't it? When we were studying in school, our parents said, you must be number one, first. That's not excellence. That is not excellence. Excellence is not becoming the number one. It's not. Excellence is not a matter of competition. No. Excellence is doing what you do the very best that you can. Okay? Excellence is doing what you do the very best you can do. The very best. Now, many times, what happens with many of us, we make Jesus our role model. Okay, Jesus. Now, when we make Jesus our role model, can we compete with Jesus? We cannot. Can we become like Jesus? Of course, but it's not easy. It's not easy. But Bible says we must grow like we must become like Jesus. And so our role model is Jesus. Now, if you look at, have you seen any pastor... To be honest, like Jesus. Impossible. If you say, you might say, you might say, Pastor Manasseh, you are like Jesus one day. Next day, you are, oh, I, see, the thing is that we are, we are human beings. Many times we cannot keep up the standard like Jesus wants. Impossible, isn't it? 
Now, is there any human being on the face of the earth who is like Jesus? No one. So I can tell myself I am like Jesus. But I know in me the failures, the mistakes, the weaknesses. I know in me. So excellence is not the competition. Excellence is doing what you can do the best. In your ability, that is excellence. And that's the reason I said a word a few days ago about Joseph. It said in Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. That means when a person is excellent in his work, where he will stand? He will stand in front of kings. So I am, I, I am challenging you today. Do your best. In, you do your best. Now, see, if you, look at, if you look at the world, the world has changed the way, the outlook, the outlook these days. I'll tell you why. Years back, years back, when we were when we were growing up, I remember always in our house we had electricity even when we were babies. Okay, even when even, even when we were babies. Now, before Alva, Thomas Alva Edison, isn't it, who found the electricity or the bulb, you can say bulb, till he found it, there was no electricity. So people were using candles or hurricane lamp or chimney lamp. The people were using different lamps. Or kerosene lamp, you know, not petrol lamp, kerosene lamp, okay? Now, what happens is that because there was no light, people used to go to bed very early. When the sun set, people go to bed. When sun rise, people get up. Why? Because there was no much electricity in the house. There was no light in the house. It was all under a kerosene lamp. And because of that, it was easy for people to go to bed early. But after Thomas Alba Edison found the light, what happened? The light is on in the house. Even if it's in the middle of the night, the light is still on. You feel light inside. One drastic change happened in the world was the sleeping time got reduced. Sleeping time got reduced. Now when people say, I am a CEO of this company, I sleep only four hours a day. People say, wow, what a hardworking man. No, no, let me tell you, years back, when Henry Ford found the car, he used to sleep more hours, but he was still successful. Still successful. Those people who found greater things in the world, they slept 8, 9, 10 hours, but they were still successful. So not having sleep is not excellent. It, it shows stress in your life. Do you get me? Stress. Our children are studying, 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 eight hours, nine hours, and they are sleeping only two hours. We say, my son stay till two o'clock, gets up in the morning, five o'clock and study. Your child is going through stress, not excellence. If you are not sleeping much, I will tell you, please. See, if you look at your mobile phone, how many times, you know, the recent survey said, a person touches the mobile phone screen more than 2,000 times a day. More than 2,000 times a day. That means we cannot keep the phone away and stay for 10 minutes. Till we go to bed. Till we, we are still on the phone. What's up? WhatsApp, Facebook, all these WhatsApp and Facebook and Instagram and all the other things have changed our lifestyle from the word we moved into those things. From the relaxation with the family, we are into Facebook and WhatsApp and Instagram. I'm not saying technologies are wrong, but what I am saying, we become a community, have no rest. If you have no Instagram, if you have no WhatsApp, 
If you have no Facebook, people say, mm, you are not fit for the society. No, understand, to, to, be, to be excellent, to show excellence in life, you do not need any of these things. What you need is to be effective where you are, and that will be an excellent life for you. There is a society in America, I forgot the name of the place, there are around more, or I think around 250,000 people. I think 250,000 people. They live in a place, they're all believers, strong, powerful believers. Very close to New York. Quite far, maybe three hours from New York. They live without internet, without mobile phone, without telephone connection, without inter, uh, mo motor vehicles, without electricity. 250,000 people plus. They, they have a huge area of land. They live there. They use bullock cart. They use horse cart. They use all those things. They cultivate a harvest and food. They are enjoying their life there. Their lifespan is long. Their sickness is less. Di divorce rate is zero. Education rate is very high. Their children go for education in big cities. And they give them the option, do you want to stay there or come back? These children go there, study there, and then they come back. They say, we don't like the life of the city, we want to come back. Why? Because they say, in our community, stress is zero. Now, stress is not to be connected with excellence. No. If you were stressed out to be excellent... Remember, our lifespan is getting less. Our mental health is not good. Our physical health is not good. We are worried all the time. Let us come out of it. Let us do excellence instead of competition. Excellence in our life. Excellence. See, when we look into the life of Moses, I Start from there, from he left there last week. And you look into the life of Moses, the Lord said, Moses was faithful in the, all the affairs of my house. Moses was faithful. So you don't need to stress out to be faithful. You don't need to be stressed out. Now, if you look into our, our schools, our schools teach about competition. Our universities teach about competition. Churches teach about competition. Family teach about competition. Siblings, it's all about competition, not doing excellent. As a pastor, if I come and say, the other church is big, this church is big, oh, we are small, oh, you know, that means competition. We are not here for competition. Please, when you tell Others about competition. See, you, 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 you can tell your children, study very well. There is nothing wrong. But if you begin to tell others that that person is studying very well, so you have to, you have to get more marks than them, more percentage than them, it goes not into excellent, it goes into competition. Now, when we look into Jesus, I'm not taking the words, the disciples of Jesus said, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. We forbid him, we told him, do not do that. Jesus said, who are you to stop it? If he is casting out demons in my name, let him do it. Who is not against us, they are for On the other side, John the Baptist, the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus, John the Baptist and said, the man whom you said, Jesus, is baptizing more people in the coma. In, in coma, it says, even though Jesus did not baptize, Jesus did not baptize, his disciples were. And John the Baptist said, 
so what what's the problem he should increase i must decrease i did not come to talk about me but i came to talk about him i am doing my work in the excellent way and he is doing his his work in the excellent way john the baptist said we are not here for competition but we are here to do an excellent work that's the same thing jesus said those who are casting out demons raising the dead in my name let them do it we are not here for competition but let us do our excellent work when we do it the blessings will come into our life now we need to look into in psalms 120 127 verse 2 if the bible says it is in vain you rise up early to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows for so he gives his beloved sleep. Okay, it says, in vain we rise up early to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For his beloved, what he does, he gives them rest, he gives them sleep. Sleep. You just imagine you know somebody who is earning 5,000 pounds a month as a salary. And your salary is around 1,200 pounds. And you decide to compete with the other person who is getting 5,000 pounds. You took the first job, the second job, the third job. You are sleeping only three hours, working three jobs. The taxman takes the tax from you double because you are having the second job and third job. At the end of the day, you after working everything, you get around 2,300 pounds. The other person doing only one job, making 5,000 pounds. You are in competition. Please, get out of the competition. Get out. You will always, you will always, if you look for competition, you will always find people to compete with. But if you are doing excellent, let me tell you, you will be happy with yourself. You will say, I have done my best. Now the question you need to ask in your life is are you doing excellent in your life? Excellent in your life. That's the question. That's what we need to ask ourselves. Are we doing excellent? We all run after first prize. But if we run after excellence, let me tell you, we will be blessed, we will be happy, automatically you will become the number one. Number one. It's not about competition. It is understanding the ability that the Lord has given you. The word of God says he has created you beautifully and wonderfully or fearfully and wonderfully. He has created you with all the abilities. I heard this uh, a joke. There was an auction going on for the brain. Okay, the auction, auction, auction going for the brain. There is a Japanese brain, there is an American brain, and there is an Indian brain. Okay? Because I, mean, because I was an Indian, even though I am still, you know, I can say this. So, the Japanese brain, there was no bid. Japanese brain started with 10 pounds. First, 10 pounds, no bid. 10 pounds, no bid. 5 pounds, bringing down, no, no bid. American brain started with $100. $100. So at, at the end, American brain was sold for 150, they said. But then it came for the Indian brain. Indian brain started with one, one, one pound, one dollar. It went to $10. $20, $50, $100, $200, $300. It's going up. Then they said, why Japanese brain is less and Indian brain is too much? They said, Japan, J Japanese people have used their brain for inventions and new findings and everything. There is nothing left. But Indian brain never used. Being lazy, sitting, doing nothing, watching. So Indian brain sold for a greater price. Now things have changed. 
Now things have changed. Things now, the thing is that God is using the Indian people to find lots of inventions. One of the, some of the richest people are Indians. Great leaders are Indians. No, God is changing. The, the mindset of people is changing. It is no more not used to brain. Now many inventions and big companies as big CEOs and CEO of the Google came from India. See, things have changed. Why? When people found that there is capacity in them, when they begin to use it, what happened? The excellence came out excellence came out see we all have ideas god has given us ideas but how many of us use ideas oh if i write my ideas today i can write volumes of pages ideas but how many of us have time for ideas we are all juggled up isn't it we do not know what to prioritize we have 10 businesses in, in hand. We don't know which one to start. We have lots of courses in mind. We don't know which one to choose. It is like if you are not in love, it is like going to find a girl for marriage. If you are in love, there is no choice. You have to marry the person whom you love. But if you are not in love, then you have to find and search. You do not know whom to choose. This one, that one, this one, that one. You are ticking the column everywhere. This is marching, that is marching, this is not marching, that is not marching. You know, it's difficult. But let me tell you, when we are ready to do excellence in our life, every blessing that God has planned for us will automatically add it into our life. Add it. First thing... We need to know excellence in our personal life. In my life, in my personal life, what is my excellence? Excellence. I will tell you this. There are people with different characters. Different characters. Some people, as soon as they get up, they will make their bed. Isn't it? They will put the pillow right, the blanket right, everything tidy, to, uh, you know, tacked everything perfectly. Some people are not like that. Their pillow will be on one side, their blanket will be on one side, socks will be on the other side. We will say, what this fellow is, he is not at all careful or clean. We cannot blame that person, but he will be excellent in other areas of life. Other areas of life. Now, is leaving the bed in that way a good habit? It's not a good habit. It's not a good habit. But we need to know that there are some people like that. Some people have 10 new jackets inside their wardrobe. But they like only one jacket. They wear the same jacket every time. They feel comfortable in it. So others ask, why couldn't you wear all the other nine? No, 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 I am comfortable only in this one. Don't try to change them because that's the way they are. Some people don't like to comb the hair like me. I don't even care about combing my hair, just woke. So my family says, comb the hair. Ah, because for me, that's not an important thing. For me, my priority is my work. What I do is more priority to me. Some people are excellent in their food habit. They eat salad, they eat avocado, they eat cucumber, they eat lettuce, you know. But on the other side, some people are not. So you cannot say that only a man is perfect, then he is excellent. No, no. That's where we make the mistake. That way, place that we make the mistake. Excellence must be done in the responsibility we take. Excellent. If there is a responsibility in your life, you must do an excellent job. For example, you are a father. Look after your children very well. You are a mother. Look after your children very well. God has given you a job. Do the job very well. You are studying. Put your 100% into it. Study very well. Not for competition. But to do well, Bible says, you know, the fruit of your labor 
What is the fruit of your labor? When you do excellence, when you do excellent, it will bring fruit. There is a, usually there is a saying, you 50%, the Lord 50%. Aadha abka, aadha hudaka. No, 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 no. We will say 100%, we will do 100%, the Lord will do. If we say we will do 50%, the Lord will say I also will do 50%. No, we will do 100% and that's called excellence. You will eat the fruit of your labor. So if you want to eat the fruit of your labor, you have to no competition but excellence. Excellence. At your workplace, how excellent job are you doing? It is difficult for people to work with me. It's difficult. Anyone who works with me is very difficult. I know. Because for me, in my job, I look for perfection and excellence. If I do a job, I will look for... That's the reason sometimes I get angry in church with people. I look for excellence. Not for competition. No competition. Excellence. If I'm getting... I always say, if I'm getting angry with you, remember I love you. If I'm not getting angry... My hands are off. You do whatever you want to do. I leave it. When we are, when we love our children, what we will do? We will sh shout at them. We will say, come on, do it. But after saying many times, if they are not doing what they we will do, we will just pray, isn't it? Ah, what to do? Let us pray. No, excellence. Let us do excellence. In our life. Now excellence in your family life. Are you supporting your partner? Your wife, your husband, your children. Excellence in family life. Are you doing your responsibilities in a good way? There are people who say, I am like this. I cannot change. How many of you heard that word? I am like this. I cannot change. There are people with that attitude also. They will not say that, but they have an attitude. I am like this, I am not going to change. See, that when we have that attitude, you cannot reach the 100% potential God has for you. You will reach 25-30%. And in, by reaching 25-30%, you are satisfied. You said you, reach, you, you have not reached. Never have an attitude, I am like this, I cannot change. Especially in your family life, if you have that attitude. Very difficult. Very difficult. We have to change. There are some people who say, you know, as a wife, wife says, I cook this, this food, you must eat. But, but I want the other one. No, I cook, you eat. What happens? Difficult, isn't it? No, that's not excellence. The husband says to the wife, I bought the cloth for you. Whatever it is, you must wear. So there are some wives, husband and wife says, you know, whatever you, li whatever you buy, I like. Praise God for that. There are some people like that. Whatever the husband buy, buy the wife is happy. Whatever the wife buy, the husband is happy. Praise God if it is like that. But not in every house. Not in every house. We have our own personal Excellence, excellence. So what is excellence in, how can you bring excellence in family life? Communication. Communication. Communication becomes a family excellent in excellence. Otherwise, no. Communication. When we communicate, the teachers, how can you make, make the education system excellent? Communication. Now we come into excellence in in our business and work, are we doing the best at our work? Are we doing the best in our business? Excellence in ministry. Are you doing the best within your ability to serve the Lord? Are you doing the best within your ability to support the church? Or are you in competition for a church as large? Are we in competition with somebody else? 
And finally, excellence in your relationship with Jesus. Excellence. We always try to be excellent everywhere else. But we always fail to understand the importance of relationship with Jesus. We always fail. That's where we fail. Many of you went to work yesterday. Okay? Monday to Friday. Many of us went to work Monday to Friday. We might have got up from 7.30, 8 o'clock and went to work, came back by 8 o'clock, so tired, cooked some food, prayed for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, slept. We spent almost 12 hours outside doing our work. How much time did we spend with Jesus? We were searching on Google, our jobs, our priorities, WhatsApp, messages, Facebook, how many likes we have, you know, all those things we did. How much time did we spend with Jesus? Are we doing excellence in our relationship with Jesus is a question that we must ask. See, we have all the other things in life. We are excellent in family life, excellent in personal life, excellent at work, excellent everywhere. But when it comes to relationship with Jesus, if it is a big zero or minus hundred, we need to think. We need to come back into an excellent relationship with Jesus. We have excuses. We have excuses. I have a baby child I have to look after. My husband is at work, I have to look after children. I am cooking, I am doing this. But that's not a thing. You have time for everything, but what about the time to, for the fellowship with Jesus? It's a question that we must ask. When you are in love with someone, you will try to find somehow time to talk to that person. If you are in love with Jesus, you will do the same. You will do the same. You will have excellence in relationship. I remember the time I was studying in school. Maybe I was around, uh, I don't know what age it was. I had no idea what science lessons were, science lessons. As I said, I study also, science. When they teach science, I don't get anything. When they teach maths, whew, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand what maths. But some people, they just take the paper, 50 out of 50, 100 out of 100. For me to get one mark in maths was a big challenge. But when I, when I came to 8, 9 standard geometry, you know, the drawings and si finding the sides and angles and I, I don't know the steps, but I'll give the answer. So this is the answer, but I don't know the steps. So we will get zero marks for it. So when I was going for my GCSE, my prayer was, Lord, let me somehow pass my GCSE. Why? Because I had no clue what science and maths was. But my father on the other side, he is an engineer. He studied with scholarship at his time for science and maths. He was the best for me. But when it comes to languages, English, Malayalam, Hindi, you know, I can tell the teacher all the answers. But when it comes to science, down. So, if you tell me, Pastor, you have to study more hard, more hard, more hard. I did my best with science. I went for tuition, I bought the books, nothing worked. But when I went to Bible college, I just listened in the class, I did not study at all. I never go to my room and study. I just listen, go and write the exam. 
I get marks nine, above 90 percent. See, because one person is weak somewhere, don't say that he is not excellent. Do not estimate a person according to your ability. Never do that. Different people, God has created with different abilities. Why I am saying this is because when you spend time in the presence of God, that's a time God will reveal to you what is your calling and what is your purpose. And there you will know where you can excel and become excellence in life. Otherwise you will be wandering everywhere. That's the reason Bible says... The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. When you fear God, that means when you reverence the Lord, when you begin to spend time with Him, when you read the Bible, when you pray, when you connect to Him, when you discuss things with Him, when you fear the Lord, the Lord gives you wisdom and you will know exactly what to do, where to do, what, where to go, what course to take, what business to do. You will be blessed in life. You will be blessed in life. You don't need to worry about what to do and what not to do. It's easy. But when you are not connected to God, you are going all over. In the whole night, Peter and his this Peter and all the friends labored throughout the night to get the fish, but they did not get even a single fish. But in the morning, Jesus came and sat there and said to Peter, Peter, you don't need to go into the deep, into the sea. Where you are, just cast your net and I will show you the catch. See, that's called the fear of the Lord brings wisdom and blessings in our life. Fear of the Lord. So the most important thing, the foundation of the excellence in our life is to build our relationship with Jesus. That's the best thing. When you are connected to Jesus, let me tell you, blessings are sitting next to us. Financial wealth, wealth transfer, prosperity, abundance, flourishing is next to us. Finally, I want to say an example and I, then we will pray. <clears throat> then the choir will come. They'll sing a song. Years back, there, when I, there was a child. The child always said to the dad, Dad, I want to have a car. The dad said, okay, we'll buy. We'll buy the car. The dad was very rich. Very rich. Filthy rich. But the dad did not buy a car for the son. On the 18th birthday. On the 18th birthday. Dad gave him a Bible in hand. And said to the son. I, I don't know whether you heard this story. Said to the son. This is my gift for you on your 18th birthday. The son was angry, annoyed, shouted at the dad, threw the Bible away and walked away from the house. The son never had a good relationship with the dad. Never had a good relationship. He always says, was a demanding, demanding son. The son threw the Bible and walked away and went. After a few years, the father died. Father died. The son came, saw the Bible, was so angry looking at the Bible, kept the Bible on the cupboard, kept there, and he cleaned the house, he did everything. Years passed. When the son was around 40 plus years old, 40 plus of something like that, 40 plus years old. One day he was thinking and he began, he, he, he was married now. He had his, his own children. Now he remembered his dad. How the dad looked after him. 
how protect him, advise him, counsel him. He felt so sad. And that's the time he remembered the Bible that dad gave. He said, that was the last gift that dad gave me. Let me go and open it. So he began to unwrap the wrappings. And the dad said, this is a Bible. He unwrapped it and he opened it. And there was a letter and a key, car key. The dad said, in this showroom, I bought a new Lamborghini for you. That is waiting. This is the key. Take the letter to the manager and that's your birthday gift from me. The son went on the knees and began to weep and cry, saying, I did not understood my father at that time. Oh, what a mistake I have done. If the son had understood the father, loved the father, respected the father, the blessing was right in his hand. But because he did not do it, what happened? He lost the greatest blessing that he was dreaming for years because of the rejection he has done to the Father. See, many times in our life, this is the same thing. The Lord is ready to bless us with greater blessings in life. Sometimes we hear the sound in our ears in the night. Daughter, get up and pray. Go on your knees and pray. He said, mm, tomorrow, isn't it? But the Lord wants to tell you something. But we don't, mm, we, this is where we need to understand, my friends. You know, also I will say, when we are doing something, the Lord said, do it better. Do it better. There are, there are times you know, when we, are, when we are at workplace and all, we don't like a manager. We'll try to show off to the manager we don't like the manager. Purposefully. We'll show the attitude, isn't it? I don't like you. This is the same thing people do with Lord. When people are getting little delayed in blessings and all, they will say, I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to show, do anything. You bless me first. No, 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 no. Lord says, you do my business first. Then I will do the rest. The greatest mistake we do is we try to compete with the Lord or we try to show our attitude to the Lord and never show our attitude to the Lord. Instead, do the other way around. Lord, whether you bless me or not, I will serve you faithfully. I will do excellent for you. Let me tell you, when you do that, the Lord will do the rest for you. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Our dear Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We say thank you for this blessed time you have given us. Committing each and every one in your hands. I ask, O oh Lord, as we spoke about excellence in personal life, looking at the examples from the Bible and also from the world, we pray, Father, that we all will grow up in such a way that we will do excellent in our life wherever we are, in our church, in our ministry, in our personal life, in our family life, in our business, in our job, in our relationship with you, we will do excellent. Lord, I bless each and every one under my voice. Lord, those who are not able to come today, Lord, we pray wherever they are, Father, let your blessings and protection be upon them. Your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.